Gonzalez, and here's how it happened. Now, the question was going to be whether he could get that left hook in. He landed a perfect right left right hook. He dipped down. Looks to make the first defense of his 126-pound crown against the former champion, Johnny Gonzalez. Referee Jack Reese calls for the bell. We are underway. The champion, Mata's in black with green, white, and red. The challenger, Gonzalez, in dark blue with gold and white. It'll be interesting to see which approach Modest takes. You know, he's been known to box and also get rough. So it'll be interesting to see which approach he takes here against Gonzalez. Some have suggested that early on, Mares will box and see if he can, and then try and get on the inside. You can see the height and reach of Johnny Gonzalez, but he needs to fight tall, not fight short. It looks like Gonzalez is trying to use that height. Give him some, give Maris some movement, but Maris isn't all, also isn't rushing in, so it looks like they're both trying to box each other at the moment. They both land the jab. The power punching Gonzalez has recorded seven first round knockouts. Maris has yet to record one in the opening round of any of his boxing matches. Interesting, Maris used to be a sparring partner in uh, Johnny Gonzalez's training camps. You know, usually you bring in young prospects, young hungry guys to get you ready for for, uh, for your fights. You know, you bring in multiple guys, obviously, but um, you never know as a young fighter when you're in a training camp with a world champion if you'll end up fighting him one day, you know? Yeah, it happened when he was 20, right? Yeah. And Mara is going against his former trainer, the Hall of Fame trainer, Nacho Berestein, who is uh, Johnny Gonzalez's trainer. He started off Mara's in his pro career, did Berestein, and of course now he's with Clemente Medina. And Mara has helped Gonzalez get ready for his ill-fated uh, fight against Israel Vasquez back when Mara's was 20 years of age, but that was then, this is now, and he's the one with the gold. Gonzalez wanting to prove that despite being in so many wars that there's still plenty left in the tank, Gonzalez got a nice right hand in a moment ago, but what Gonzalez has not done in round one is use the jab at all. And he said that was a very important weapon for him in this fight. Yeah, it's almost like he's kind of putting, putting it out there, but he's not really committed to it as, as much as he should be. Final minute of the opening round, and Mares comes forward with a right hand and now attacking the body. Gonzalez oh. drops Mares with the lethal left hook! He's hurt. He's hurt bad, guys. against Argenian was a flash knockdown, but he was rattled by that left hook by Gonzalez, Gonzalez here has, in round one. Gonzalez has a great left hook. He's knocked out a number of fighters with it. Minus has a hold, guys. Minus He's got a hold. down again. He's got a hold. Three. Mamma mia, yeah, Gonzalez has done it. Done, Do not look at my record, do not look at my resume and all the wars I've been in and think that I'm a shop-worn fighter. He proves it here tonight well, with an amazing first-round knockout. One of the things his resume shows, though, is that he has tremendous power with those 46 KOs. And Make it 47. Now 47, and he has used that left hook to knock people out. Hazumi Hasegawa, a Done. terrific champion, was knocked out with that left hook by Gonzalez just like this. You know, Mauro, it's funny, you were talking about first round KOs. <laughs> you know, I, what's that, the second round? That, that no, was first the, round. First, first round. round. So it's almost like, you, almost like you were calling it yeah. without realizing yeah. it when you were discussing first round knockouts. Thank what you for that. Wow. Johnny Gonzalez, and here's how it happened. Now, the question was going to be whether he could get that left hook in. He landed a perfect left hook. He dipped down. Gave him a little fainting action and then landed the left hook. And, and Polly, take and, a look and at And those were the, tough, the touch jabs we were talking about. Yeah. We were actually saying, yes. you know, he's only touching it with the jab. He's not committing to it. Well, I guess he was setting him up because that touch jab eventually set up that hook instead. That's exactly right. And and he dipped down, a little fainting, and got that he left pulled, hook. He in. pulled us. Yes, he did. It's been known to happen.
<laughs> and here's where the fight, well, me anyway, not so much oh, you. <laughs> here's where the fight was stopped. Again, the left hooks became important. And as you pointed out, Paulie, no holding. Amaras could he's not trading. hold him. He's trading there. And this is not the thing to do when you're hurt. You know, he's got a heart of a lion. But you got to, before you bring back that fighting spirit, you got to want to make sure you're able to fight again. He's fighting while he's hurt. And against a puncher, I mean, Gonzalez is a monster puncher. You don't want to be doing that. Here is yet another look at it. The left hook, which is a great weapon for Gonzalez. We just didn't know if we we're going to see it a lot in this fight because he wanted to stay back and use the jab and a straight right hand. But he used that left to great effect in this fight, and it was enough to, for him to score a dramatic win and get his world championship back, the one he gave up to Ponce de Leon that Mares won. The left hook closes the book in rapid fashion here in round one. Johnny Gonzalez is on top of the world again as a 126 pound champion. He is the winner by way of knockout. And once again, the WBC featherweight champion of the world, the hard hitting John.